And now it's time for a Q&A from you, the viewers. And I got this question in on my Facebook group the other day, but I've been getting more and more of these questions from folks who are uh, setting up their Plex servers. And a lot of folks are buying uh, NVIDIA Shields and looking at maybe having the Shield be their Plex server. And we did a video on this a while ago. It does work. I've run Plex servers on Shields before. The Pro is probably better just because it has the internal hard drive, but you can also uh, run it on any NVIDIA Shield and plug in some external storage to it. But I found more often than not that if you are doing more on your Shield and perhaps having more people connecting to your Plex server, you start to kind of hit the upper limit of what the device is capable of. It has a limited amount of RAM. Uh, it's doing other things like running all of your Android apps and everything else. And if you're doing a couple of transcoding sessions and trying to watch something on it at the same time, uh, you might start hitting the limit as to what the Shield can do and everyone's performance might take a hit as a result of it. And I get a lot of questions over and over again about little glitches that might pop up here or there on the Shield that uh, make it not so great of an experience all the time, especially if you're really trying to serve media to more than just yourself on that particular device. Now, I wanted to talk about what I have for a Plex server uh, and then give you some other ideas to look at as well. Uh, I've got this WD MyCloud PR2100. It's been driving my media serving here in the house uh, for probably the last two years now. Uh, so all of my Blu-ray movies are on this. It's also my HD Home Run DVR server, uh, and it's my Plex server. And I've had evenings where I was watching a Blu-ray uh, you know, 4K movie uh, upstairs in my home theater room. My wife was streaming one of her Hallmark Christmas movies or something off of the thing on the uh, HD Home Run uh, DVR server there. And um, it was also recording stuff onto the DVR all at the same time, and it was able to keep up with everything. And uh, it's been a very good box for media, and I've kind of made this just media. So I have a Synology drive I use for file storage and uh, some basic server tasks. This thing is the media server, and it's been fine. In fact, it didn't even upgrade the RAM on it. It's got whatever the default uh, RAM is, which I think is either two or four gigabytes of RAM. Works great, and it's been a great solution. But it can be costly because I think they can run uh, into the six or seven hundred dollar territory. Uh, another video, which I'll put down below in the master playlist, um, will give you some ideas for something a little more affordable. And what we did on the channel about, a, about eight months ago or so uh, is we got one of the Gemini Lake NUX. This is their Silver J5005 base machine. I'll put a link to that video so you can find exactly which one we used in there so you can get the right one. Uh, those cost about 180 bucks. They're a bare bones kit. You do have to get RAM and, of course, storage to plug into it. Uh, but it is actually able to work just as well as my NAS box does. In fact, this, the processor is, is a kind of a new version of what the NAS box is already running with. And we were able to get hardware transcoding as on the Plex server side running in Linux. So you didn't even need uh, a license for Windows to get it up and running. And it was, worked out really well. We were doing three simultaneous streams, and we still had a lot of room to spare on that. Uh, and that might be the way to go. Uh, another option is to use whatever computers you already have in the house. And even some older computers that you're not using anymore, like old laptops or something like that, may actually be really good for media serving. Uh, for many years, I had an old laptop that was acting as my server, and it worked just fine. Uh, there is a great uh, guide here for knowing whether or not your computer will work as a transcoding Plex server at the link you see on screen. Uh, this link will take you to Intel's uh, product specification page, and I have it searching for Quick Sync Video. That is what makes hardware Plex transcoding work or not. If your processor has Quick Sync support, it will work very well as a Plex server. If it doesn't, it won't. And uh, that is really the bottom line here. If you have to do a lot of hardware transcoding to get video onto your phones or whatever, uh, having that Quick Sync support is going to make the difference between a Plex server that works and one that does not. So check out what your uh, NAS box has or your laptop or your desktop, whatever it is. Go to this website and see if that chip is on the list. If it is, I think you'll have a very good Plex serving experience. And I've had a bunch of requests to do more on this topic as a full-blown video. Uh, so let me know what you'd like to see covered down in the comments below. And it is on the radar screen to get done at some point. Uh, for our regular Plex sponsored video here on the channel. This channel is brought to you by the LON.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar.
If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.